Jackson, brilliant, strong, and how his Scottish faithful love it. McCullum is back. It's the relaunch of the pocket rocket. You ready for this? Two of the world's top featherweights meet on Saturday fight night. Scott Harrison making the first defense of the WBO world featherweight crown against Wayne McCullough. It's one of the biggest fights in this country in years, and it's truly captured public imagination. Some lucky people here, the ones who got the tickets for the Brayhead Arena. It will be a total sellout. They could have filled a much bigger stadium. Many were disappointed on both sides of the Irish Sea, but everyone is sure they're in for something special. Beyond that, they can't agree at all. Pollock's been in with the best. He stayed the distance with the best, but he's never beaten the best. Harrison is on the way up, and I think he will take him in points. I'd love to see him knock him out right enough, but I think he'll go to points. Well, I think that McCall um, will go the whole way. Hopefully he'll win on points, you know. I can't see him um, knocking him, but um, I don't think Harrison's going to do any real damage to him. The guy's got a hard leg of land. I think Scott Harrison is the finest fighter that Scotland's produced in a long time. I've watched him since he fought Patterson three years ago, and I've looked forward to this fight. Well, I'm 100% sure that Wayne's going to win this fight. I was at his uh, return fight in Las Vegas, his first fight back out again, and he did a great job there. And we saw him this afternoon, we talked to him. He's relaxed as can be, and he's ready to go. 100% certain he's going to win it tonight. So now you see why we're calling this a classic. It's a fantastic matchup, the best in years. A major title is on the line. World status, two of the best we've produced from these shores in recent times and so much history and ambition on both sides. Jim Watt's achievements mark him out as a Scottish hero already. Barry McGuigan, an Irish hero in his day as well. And now Harrison and McCulloch aim to emulate the achievements of both of our top guests here tonight. Make your own mind up, as Adam Smith reminds us, so much is at stake in a classic featherweight division. There's something very special about featherweight fights. And this clash has British boxing tingling with anticipation. It's the new brigade against the old fold. It's going to be a crying fight. A brawly atmosphere, 6,500 fans there. The uh, place will be just, I think we're giving out 6,000 flags as well. So you can just imagine it now. It's, it's going to be unbelievable, electric. Hopefully it'll be a cracking night for the whole of Britain. And Irish fans, it's going to be a great atmosphere. You know, Scott said about the 6,000 people for him. There's over a thousand coming from Belfast, you know, so there's going to be a lot of support for me too. Glasgow's Scott Harrison quietly matured into a world-class featherweight and then produced an exceptional performance to take the WBO crown from Julio Pablo Chacon. Belfast's Wayne McCulloch won the world bantamweight title in Japan, took Nassim Hamad and Eric Morales to the wire, fought back from medical problems, was plagued by inactivity, but now heads for a fairy tale ending. They've trained frenetically for months and have spiced this up with old fashioned needle. I see Wayne McCullough getting stopped in the later part of his fight because, uh, as you say, no one's done that, Scott. Aye. I will, that doesn't mean he can get stopped. I'm going to win the fight. Whichever way I have to, I'm going to win the fight. Both were physically perfect on the scales. Harrison has youth and size advantages. McCulloch, the experience. Will we have another featherweight classic? It's why it's such a great matchup. But Jim, from Harrison's point of view, why make such a risky and demanding first defense of his title? What does that tell you? Well, it's the way he's conducted his whole career. He's never dodged anybody. He's done it the old-fashioned way, the British title, the Commonwealth title, a, a, a few world, the former world champions on his record. It's always the way he's done it. It's the way he wants to do it. He wants to be known as a proper world champion, and he's taken a big chance tonight. How about McCulloch here tonight, Barry? Is it going to be either a fairy tale or a farewell for Wayne? This is his last chance. Uh, well, he sees it as his last chance to, to break into the world title again. He's 
uh, a fighter that's just implacable. He's so driven. I've never known a fighter more driven and determined. Looking at him in the last couple of days, he looks very relaxed. And if anything, Harrison looked a little bit tetchy. So he's really up for this fight, and he will give it everything. Well, he's done everything through his career so well, hasn't he, McCulloch? This is his seventh world title fight tonight. Maybe that, as Barry alluded, is why he seemed so relaxed when he arrived just a few minutes ago. Door to win owner. Mm -hmm. Some people say that is not the thing that a major fighter should do on this. Listen, listen, don't believe that nonsense. Whatever suits you, and it's, that's the way he's always been, whatever makes you feel comfortable and relaxed, you do it. And this makes him feel happy and feel contented, and at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's about feeling the best you can, feeling confident, having your family around you, meaning you making you feel secure, and then no one having his work done, he's ready to go in and fight. Team McCulloch with manager Cheryl, his wife, alongside him. They arrived a little while ago, and you may be able to hear the noise behind us here as Scott Harrison walks into the back of the arena. Now, this is the retiring Harrison, Jim. You know, the man who doesn't like the limelight, but he changes personality on the night of a fight, doesn't he? Yeah, well, I think he realises now he has to set... Look at the adulation as well. Yep, yep. They, love him. they love his style, they love the way he goes about his business. But uh, this is a real tough match for him. Uh, we have a newly crowned champion against a proven world-class challenger. I don't think we've ever really had that in Scotland before. Thank you, Jim, and more for Barry, of course, later. While they make ready backstage, also getting ready here tonight to go into action first, Alex Arthur, a young man who could in time top a major bill here in Scotland, we hope. It's his latest appearance at Super Featherweight, looking for a 15th straight win tonight against Patrick Malinga from South Africa. Fittingly, perhaps, a member of a famous boxing clan in South Africa. Spectacular record as an early knockout specialist. So this may not be straightforward for Arthur. Commentary, Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark. And for this bill screened across the USA as well as here at home, our MC, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the first of our championship attractions of the evening. And now, making his way to the ring, please welcome the British champion from Edinburgh, Scotland, Alex Arthur. Well, these are boom times for Scottish boxing. Not only Scott Harrison, but the young man who calls himself amazing, Alex Arthur. He's looked pretty amazing so far in his career, winning the British Championship and defending it already. And he's only had 14 fights, 12 of which he's won inside distance. This is the gold medal winner, who many people think is the new Ken Buchanan for Edinburgh. Well, he's very exciting. You know, he's a good talker, a good character, and goes about his business so well. He just seems you know, that there's a little bit extra with Alex Arthur. It's that little bit of star quality that I think is going to see him a star of the future. He's got a bit of ego as well. I, I don't mean that in any critical way. I think it's uh, probably quite a good thing. He just can't wait until he's top of the bill. And that's probably how it should be, isn't it? Well, I don't think he's going to have to wait that much longer. He's very exciting, good fighter, and you know, I think he'll get his turn pretty soon. This is the tail of the tape for this one tonight. Arthur, who is due to defend his British Championship against uh, Willie Le Monde, but instead fights this uh, dangerous puncher, Patrick Malinga from South Africa. Al Arthur's 24, Malinga, who's a year older, Alex Arthur is taller, will have a bit of a reach advantage as well. Weight both inside the nine stone, four pound limit. Malinga's been a pro longer, he's had four more fights, but look at the knockout percentage difference. Arthur, 85%, Malinga, 61. He can be fragile as well, Malinga. So we're about to get the big build-up from MC Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Brayhead Arena here in Glasgow, Scotland, as we have a big night of action in store for you. And it's all brought to you courtesy of Frank Warren's Sports Network in association with Showtime, Sky Sports, and sponsored by Red Square and Ladbrokes. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBA, the president, Gilberto Mendoza, supervisor Juan Luis Torralba, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge is Bernard Connolly. 
Introducing to you our three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Wolverhampton, England, we have John Coyle. From Birmingham, England, Terry O'Connor. And from London, England, Dave Paris. Our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout is from Derby, England, Paul Thomas. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA International Super Featherweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, joining us all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. He weighed in at nine stone, three and a half pounds, or 129 and one half U.S. pounds. His record stands at 13 wins, three losses, two draws, with 11 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the hard-hitting Patrick Malinga. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, this 12-round title bout, wearing white trunks with gold trim, representing his home of Edinburgh, Scotland. His weight, ladies and gentlemen, nine stone, three and three quarter pounds, 129 and three quarter US pounds. He is the former Commonwealth gold medalist, undefeated in his campaign to the ring as a professional with 14 wins, no losses, 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ranked number six in the world by the WBO as a junior lightweight contender. Please welcome the British champion, the undefeated, amazing Alex Arthur. Once again, Paul Thomas is our referee in charge. 12 rounds of boxing schedule. So you're both in the dressing room, you know what I expect of you. Just to repeat myself just once, keep your shots on the target area. Nothing around the back, nothing in the kidney area. Give me a good clean contest. The best of luck to both of you. Well then. Arthur has to be a little bit careful tonight because Patrick Malinga has 10 wins inside two rounds and one in the third. But all three of his defeats have also been by stoppage. A puncher who is a little bit fragile. Chinny has very, very thin rake-like legs I've noticed as well Arthur in the white trunks the former Commonwealth Games gold medalist of 1998 unbeaten in 14 as a pro super featherweight nominally for uh, a WBA intercontinental championship tonight but that doesn't mean too much really in the wider scheme of things it is a chance though for Arthur to showcase his talents to the American audience remember this is going out in the USA as well tonight and there's the dangerous fast right hand of Malinga early on he'll have to watch that Arthur yes he will he's got to be pretty accurate with that jab he's got to bring the punch straight back to protect his chin he can't afford to be sloppy because that looked at a pretty quick right hand he did lightning fast and there's a good right hand straight away from Arthur who can hit has got a good stoppage record already He's always seemed to have star quality from the moment he turned pro. Just a bit easy to hit with left hook, something they'll have been working on in the gym. The Alex Arthur team is trained by Scott Harrison's dad, Peter Harrison. Malinga looks open to right hands to me. Well, neither one can really afford to make a mistake this early. It's got to warm into the fight a little Arthur. Arthur who was discovered by Tommy Farr's sparring partner Bob Scally when he was 10 years old. It's not really finding the range with his jab so far Arthur. He's had to take this opponent at two weeks notice well, he's doing that the right thing Arthur. he's showing Malinga plenty of respect and he'll have heard about the South Africans punch power too he's fast with the left hand as well there Malinga from a famous fighting family both his brothers are professionals
showing a little bit of variety Malinga just turning the jab and looking for the right hand you know he's got that the center of the ring and he's making Arthur move around him Arthur just looking a little tentative as he weighs up what's in front of him but his good boxing brain will be working at this as a little sneak uppercut from him just starting to look to get his punches a little closer get them on target now stepping in that couple of inches extra Arthur but a quiet opening round from his point of view welcome to the uh, Brayhead Arena welcome back sold out tonight some 6,000 fans and these two guys with uh, good stoppage records inside oh, two yeah. rounds Arthur's done that seven times Malinga with ten wins inside the two rounds so dangerous early on second round of this one it's due to go 12 by the way first impressions of Malinga Glenn well he certainly looks capable doesn't he I mean, quite sharp pretty upright um, and I think you know, Arthur's got to work his way and he's certainly causing a few problems for Arthur particularly with the hand speed but remember this fellow Malinga his own punch resistance is a question mark he's been found wanting in that department good with the jab there as well not working Arthur so far early on in this round yes he's getting busy Malinga some good shots going in he's finding the chin of Arthur and giving him a real good test not too many have managed to do this with Alex Arthur for any length of time how will he respond the South African clearly growing in confidence well, really this is what we want to see we're going to find a little bit more out about Alex Arthur as he gets hit oh and he looked a little bit wobbled and off balance there this is where you start to learn about what fighters have when they're under a little pressure how does he respond to that just looking at shade open defensively Arthur a bit square on at times well I think he's taking, been taken a little bit by surprise from the, with these accurate shots from Malinga good jab that's a bit better from Arthur Malinga sort of shook his head almost as if he was trying to shake off the effects of a punch and that's a better from Arthur the right hand cracking shot well now Malinga's felt the power of Arthur but still comes back with that dangerous right well, he means business all right this is boiling up to be some night here not only with the electric main event we have for you but this is turning out to be pretty absorbing too early on anyway just showing that he's got some work to do with the defense Arthur being picked up more than we've ever seen before past people have thought that his defense has been a bit leaky because he's not been very worried about the punch power of the guys in front of him but it may just be an inherent weakness well he can't afford to have that sort of weakness in with a puncher like Malinga <laughs> Malinga asking plenty of questions in that second round Scott Harrison team around him, nearest to you, former Scottish lightweight Peter Harrison, Billy Nelson there too. Yeah, long punches, just rocking the head back. There's a nice left hook from Malinga. And just in a, a little bit of bother there, Arthur. He just looked a bit disorganized, didn't he, for a he, moment? He did. I mean, he still had his wits about him. He got the, the left hand up, just looks and shakes his head at Malinga, but those punches certainly registered. 
Alex Arthur, one of seven boxers from the famous Leith Victoria Club, who went on to win British championships. The most famous was Tansy Lee, the British flyweight champion, who beat the legendary Jimmy Wilde on Burns Night in 1915. Third round here. Good right hand from Arthur in the white trunks with the gold stripe down the side. Gold denoting his Commonwealth gold of 1998. question with Malinga is how dangerous is he in his fights after the first couple of rounds if he hasn't got rid of his opponent by then does he then start to get in a bit of trouble I wonder he's lost to in a couple of rounds himself to Mzonke Fana in a South African title fight beaten in two dismantled lost a very tough and classic fight with Matthew Zulu in nine it's a good right cross there with his back to the ropes from the South African well, Malinga certainly no pushover. We're seeing that he's he's got good credentials and some good style. His older brother Peter came over here and beat Ensley Bingham and Spencer McCracken. So there's plenty of respect for the Malinga family. It's not related to the famous Sugar Boy, conqueror of Nigel Ben, as far as we know. Break coming out, no shot. Break clean. Well done. What's the end? Timing not quite there for Alex Arthur. He's been tentative tonight. I think you were right, Glenn. A bit surprised by what Patrick Malinga has had to offer in the early stages. Well, he's starting to warm to it a bit more now, using the jab well in this round, Arthur. And I think he needs to get that on to get the distance right. His chin's been tested a bit tonight, and he's passed that test, really. Yes, he has. The defence been a bit open at times, but... Again, just getting the, the, the right hand up, but that left hook looks dangerous. Maybe learning more here, Alex Arthur, than in about five easy knockover jobs. Starting to get the jab going in the right hand. Suddenly, the mouth gapes open of Malinga. Arthur impose himself. First round was close, you could argue about that one. Second round, I think, was Malinga's, and that's a nice right hand from him there. And Arthur goes into a bit of showboating, as if to say, nah, not hurt by that. Well, I, I think that shows a little bit of, of inexperience, the fact that, you know, for the first time he's having to take shots. He needs just to get on with the, the job, look professional. Well, also here tonight, and he could be the next opponent for the winner between Scott Harrison and Wayne McCulloch, Johnny Tapia, the man who's been pronounced dead at least a couple of times, once twice recently, the three-weight world champion. He was besieged by autograph hunters when he came in. He's flown over specially, and of course he was a wow, wasn't he, when he appeared at the York Hall, Beth Green over here. Yes, certainly an awful lot of charisma with that man. Fourth round a glittering occasion tonight here at the Brayhead Arena just outside Glasgow Renfrew to be exact up near the airport walked onto a right hand a bit then Arthur just started this round as if he wants to move up a gear raise the tempo show Malinga who's the boss well, he's looking to load up a little bit Arthur oh, got to be careful when he does that that he's not caught Lingus arrived as no respecter of Arthur's reputation. Sneak right hand was well picked by the Scot. Yes, 
good shot with the right hand too fast over the top of the guard of Melling, which had just slipped a bit up and noticed that. Defence a little better now from Arthur, getting his hands up, looking to get in range and you know, just move the, the upper body around a little bit. Yes, he sharpened up his reflexes, it seems. He's beginning to take control of it. Well, I think he's just getting the, the tempo of the fight and he's just starting to solve a few puzzles that Malinga's setting him. It's a good fight for him at this stage, this one, isn't it? It's a very good fight. So long as he wins it, of course. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, it, it, there's a gamble there, but he's the sort of fighter that you know he needs to be moved on. Better accuracy, better movement, some lateral movement as well now from Arthur. That's helping him defensively. He's not just in front of Malinga as much as he was early on. It's almost like he's worked out the style. Yes, he has, and it's good that he's done that. It just shows you're a thinking fighter. Still got to be careful of that right hand. That still looks at a danger from Malinga. South African tries to come on strong again, but it looked like arm punches, as if he's tiring a little. He's got the jab going now, Arthur. This is much better. After a slow start, easily his round. Well, two Scottish boxing heroes, Ken Buchanan, the great lightweight, well away Gary Jacobs, are with Ed Robinson. Well, Gary, a fascinating fight. Absolutely fine, it was fantastic. This is what Alex Arthur needs, he's a wee step up in class. Somebody that's not just that he's going to knock out, he's had a lot of knockouts in his career, and it's a real test for him. Is Alex Arthur getting hit too much though, Ken? Not too badly, like, you know, but I mean, he's, he's picked up a couple of punches in a couple of rounds and he says to himself, no, that guy can punch a wee bit, so I'm going to be a wee bit wary of him, like, you know. But he is missing, I, I, he's throwing a lot of punches, I like, but he's dropping me a few, they, they, a wee bit short, more than I would like to see him doing. And Malinga does look dangerous, Gary. Yeah, absolutely, I mean, he's got a big kill record himself, he's only been beat by a couple of times, and as I say, it's a real test for him, and Alex Arthur, you know, you have to step up in class, he wants to be a world champion, he has to fight oh. the best, and this is a real test for him. Thank you. Well, Alex Arthur's going with Ken Buchanan to the Hall of Fame in America in the summer. One day he wants to be in it. Long way to go, though. <laughs> yes, long uh, way. There's a long way, but set off in the right direction. Round five of this 12-rounder at Super Featherweight. He's only once had to go past six. Arthur against Darius Snarski. The pole. Arthur getting the, the right hand up, that's something he's been criticised for, dropping that a little bit, but you know, he's managing to get it up, he's looking for the, the shot coming back from Malinga. Arthur who says he wants to fight in America at least once this year. He also wants to top a bill in his home city of Edinburgh, I'm sure that can be arranged with a little bit of help from Mr Warren. Why not against Michael Gomez, who's here tonight watching and uh, dearly wants a crack at Arthur. Good fight. No well, reason why they can't do it either. He's got to get this one out of the way first, and this is no foregone conclusion because Malinga is pretty tricky. This is better from Arthur now, starting to unload with some heavy looking shots. And his accuracy has improved a lot. He's Finding the range, his defence has improved. Set questions, but coming up with some positive answers. Now, rode that right hand all right from Malinga. But that's always the danger. Every now and again, he can get through that right hand, so he really has to have good concentration on the. Now he's showing a bit of his quality now, Alex Arthur. It's just a slip more than anything from Malinga in the center of the ring. Good left hook there from Arthur, just pushing forward. And the straight right as well. Malinga 
just dabbing at the, the right eye and blinking. Maybe he's got a, a punch in the eye. It's just the impression that bit by bit the resistance is being punched out of Patrick Melinga. He's now moving so much more fluently, Arthur, looking as if he's relishing the job in front of him. He looks too as if he's carrying the confidence of a man who solved the problems. Yes, he does, and uh, you just get the, the, the feeling there's a few doubts coming in the mind of Malinga now. Evidence of how well Alex Arthur is getting his jab going now. Take a look at these statistics. 68 landed by Alex Arthur, just the 37 from Patrick Malinga, and the jab's the key to oh, opening okay. this up for him, maybe. Yes, he's just starting to find that punch. It's working well. The accuracy is much better now taking control of this fight. Sixth round. Patrick Malinga is younger brother. By the way, Vizu is the South African bantamweight champion. If your name's Malinga and you live in South Africa, it seems you have to be a professional boxer. Tries to lift it a little again at the start of this round. Textbook right hand from Arthur really does throw that combination well the straight left and then the right. And the two strains of one Alex Arthur, there's only one Alex Arthur. That, again, just a slip on a wet patch in the center of the ring, I think, from Malinga. It's the second time that's happened. The suggestion maybe the legs are starting to stiffen up as well, Ian. Could be, couldn't it? But Arthur's defence has improved about 80% from the first couple of rounds. That's a fantastic left-hand counter, and that sent the legs wobbling. Arthur senses the moment, reigns in the punches, tries to line him up for the finish. They're not all landing, but Malinga is in some difficulty on those ropes. Arthur has to be careful, he doesn't leave himself open for one counter from the South African. But what a left-hand counter to start this off, it was a really ace shot. Well, the, leg, the legs have definitely gone for Malinga, he's still hurt. Malinga is on the verge, I think, of going. Well, he's digging, he's in a big left hook to the body, hurt by that one as well. I just wonder there if he hadn't held on whether he might have gone. The legs have gone. Arthur has him here. Right hand stopped all over. And in the end, after a slow start, Alex Arthur was very, very impressive. Well, the work he did in that final round was something to behold. Well, that shows that he's, he's passing these tests. He's getting better and better. But Malinga... You know, give him something to work for. He had to concentrate, but when he when he started to wear him down, saw the opportunity that big left hand, and then he just kept the pressure on. That was an excellent finish to a very very good contest. Yep, Malinga started well, and it took some time for Alex Arthur to get going. He was caught by a few good shots, but I think there was even a plus in that. He was against a puncher. And he never looked like going down from them. Disorganized once. Yes, he got a little bit disorganized. Just having a chat there, the two. Very good sport, Alex Arthur. But he did get a little bit disorganized, but he, he regrouped very well. And it was good to see the way his defense just got better as he went on. There was the left hand counter that started it. Didn't quite realize, didn't quite register how good a shot he'd actually landed mm. there, Arthur, because he was willing, he was skipping out of the way. Then he realizes the legs are gone. And then he goes back. Well, he was doing the bossa nova, wasn't he, after that landing? He certainly was. The legs never got themselves right again. Took everything out of those legs of Malinga. And then Arthur, you know, he knows how hurt he is. Just keeps the pressure on. 
just to put the win in context without wishing to take anything away from Alex Arthur he did it well but it was against a fighter who hasn't been good enough to win a national title in South Africa so there's other levels to go yet for him before he gets to the world stage that that's that's exactly absolutely correct Ian but I think what we've seen was a very good performance and we saw early on that Malinga did have the potential to cause an upset did have the potential to hurt Arthur but he handled it so well and I think that was a, a good performance and you could see he was thinking and learning as the fight went on there's a lot of the showman in him he says if he hadn't been a boxer he might have been an actor as it is he's never had any other job he's not doing bad for a kid who was banned from boxing by his parents when he was younger he's not banned now Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, three seconds in round number six. Our referee in charge, Paul Thomas, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and now the new WBA International Super Featherweight Champion, amazing Alex Arthur. While Arthur and takes his well-deserved applause, Peter Harrison has been rushing backstage. That's because it's the firm of Harrison in action in our main event tonight. And Scott, son Scott, prepares to make his first WBO World Featherweight title defence. Coming up shortly here against Wayne McCulloch, a man who has been patient indeed, waiting through all those years of setbacks in Las Vegas, two years out of the game because of a medical suspension, and still McCulloch said he would be back for a major title chance. He's been right in that respect. He's got just a few more minutes to wait now here. And how long do we have to wait before Alex Arthur steps up? One or two little questions asked, perhaps, as we thought tonight, Jim, against Patrick Malinga. Were you overall, were you impressed? Yep, I, I'm impressed because he had to grind out a performance tonight and he did that. Uh, there's a difference between beating people up and actually beating people and tonight he had to work for a victory, he did it well. Still leaky defences in the first couple of rounds. We knew we would see the best of Malinga in the early stages, that when he was going to be his most dangerous. At that time, maybe he's not shedding maybe some of the bad habits quickly enough, but still, class fighter and the longer the fight was going, the better he was looking. Let's see how he views his performance now. Well, Alex, last time you retained your British Super Featherweight title in the sixth round. Same result again with this Patrick Malinga, but a totally different affair, wasn't it? Yeah, it was brilliant. It was a good part of the learning process, you know. The guy was a good fighter. He was intelligent. I thought many guys liked him in the amateurs, going back to the old scenario, but um, he was a very tough guy, you know, t technically good, and, you know, I had to take my time. I could gradually see him slowing up, so. He was quick, he was spidery, and he could punch. Do you feel he got hit far too much in the early stages? I never felt anything. So I don't know if I did, but no, I, didn't. I think but my defence was fine, you know. You can see with my face, I didn't think I've got any marks, so I couldn't have took that many shots. Peter Harrison joined your corner at the beginning of the third round. It yeah. seemed that turned the key a bit and you got into a rhythm and you, you solved the puzzles pretty quickly. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I think it helped, you know, Peter coming at the corner. It's always uh, an inspiration. But, um, yeah, everything, I, I just felt great inside there tonight, you know. I was taking him apart with the jab, you know, the jab was so accurate, I never missed once. Was it the perfect fight for you at this stage, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it was a good learning fight, you know. And, it's just part of the learning process, you know, it's just all a matter of time before I think. Can you stay with Maiden Friend, do the double for Scotland tonight? Will he retain against Wayne McCulloch? It's going to be an, an almighty battle and I'm just going to go get ready now and I'm going to take my seat and watch it because it's going to be great. We can't wait either. Well done tonight, Alex. Thanks, Adam. He's a stylist, Barry, but is that going to be enough as he climbs the ladder as we hope he will? Yeah, we don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we're only sort of assessing him on that performance and we think he's got great potential but you never know one never knows and as we go along we constantly reassess our opinion of him I have to tell you tonight I thought he was very impressive his defense was very good the right hand was glued to his uh, his right hand side and that's the problem he was tucking uh, they leaving the chin hanging out on several occasions but I thought he boxed very well very sensibly and was patient and he had to be patient and although he didn't look marked at all he did get caught with slippy uh, with a couple of punches on the outside but I thought his defense in general was very very good his precision was good um, and I thought he could have maybe put a few more combinations together but I thought his performance on the whole against a dangerous puncher was that like that was great and I think Alex needs a guy that can actually 
fight back and hit hard, and a, a tough opponent would bring the best out of him. He is stopping opponents, Jim. Now, that's another great plus at this stage, isn't yes, it? Yes, and, and tonight he stopped a decent opponent. Yeah, I know this fellow has been stopped a couple defense. of times before, but Alex had a lot of work to do. He was taking punches in the early stages. He realised he couldn't be too adventurous. See, Alex wants to be a star. He wants to please the crowd. Sometimes he's maybe a little bit reckless. But I think he got clipped a couple of times early. You can see here, delayed effect from the punch. From this point on, the fight was over. Alex could have 40 take chances. I think his balance was gone, so there's no way he was going to throw a powerful punch back. When you know your opponent uh, is in bad shape like that, you can take chances then, just let the punches flow, and uh, the referee timed it perfectly. Barry, this was a South African opponent of what we would say, in, in, even in South African terms, is slightly below yeah. top class. Yeah. He's fought a string of Eastern Europeans. Yeah. There is still some unfinished domestic business. Yes. Gomez, pithy to name yeah. but two. Yeah. Does he need to tidy up at Lear home? as well. Yeah. And Lear, I above mean, all. I think, I think there are a number of very good, challenging fights from out there this year that he can improve on and build on. I think... Uh, he is the sort of guy that does things with precision. He takes his time, he's patient. He could have maybe stopped Carl Graves earlier and took chances, but that's not his style. He does it cleverly, and I think he's improved tonight uh, dramatically in the defence department. Our top of the bill tonight is for the WBO World Featherweight title, and Jim First has been looking at the strengths of the champion. Scott Harrison is primarily known as an aggressive fighter but he does possess sound boxing skills with everything coming off a stiff left jab. This puts him in range where he can land with his heavier shots. Scott is rarely on the back foot and uses his strength and size to force opponents onto the retreat. Once he has the other man on the ropes, his offence is incessant. Good quality fighters have been overpowered when faced with the weight of Harrison in full flow. There are few fighters more determined than Scott once he has the bit between his teeth. His steely-eyed approach means he always wants to have the final say when trading shots, and his single-mindedness could well prove too great for Wayne McCulloch tonight. If the Irishman has underestimated Harrison's power, he could be in for a shock. Scott is happy to trade punches in the knowledge that he has a sound chin and once his blows land, he has every chance of finishing this fight inside the distance. Could he become the first man to stop Wayne McCulloch tonight? Will he be one of the first to get the centre of the ring and force McCulloch back? That's what it has to do. It's, it's important. Scott likes to set a pace in a fight. He likes to control the pace. This is going to be very difficult tonight. He must not fall into the trap of finding McCulloch's fight, try to throw as many punches as McCulloch does because he's never done that in his life before. He must not try to do that. He must find ways to slow McCulloch down, block his punches, make him miss, and hit McCulloch with stiffer shots than McCulloch's throwing back at him. Thank you, Jim. And Barry, in turn, has taken a close look at the strengths of Wayne McCulloch. Wayne's biggest asset is his work rate. There is no fitter boxer in Britain than the pocket rocket, and opponents have to be ready to fight for 12 tough rounds. Against Eric Morales, Wayne kept a high pace against a champion who was said to be on the verge of giving up before gritting out a tough decision. Having moved up from the lighter weights, McCullough will hold the edge in speed. He will need this to land his combinations tonight. In his first fight back, after two years out of the ring, he showed he has lost none of his speed and seems to be hitting more forcefully at featherweight. Even though Wayne's defense has been questioned, he has always possessed a granite chin. Nassim Hamid's biggest punches had minimal effect on McCullough, who more than held his own in some ferocious exchanges with the former WBO featherweight champion. McCullough holds a distinct advantage in experience. Wayne won his first world title by traveling to Japan and has rarely had home advantage when challenging the best. Hamid had a torrid night with Wayne and Morales was forced to fight right to the final bell. McCullough's greater efforts just might be enough to impress the judges tonight. How does he bring all those strengths to bear, though, Barry, against such a, a much younger champion tonight? Simple. He's got to get right out there. As soon as that first bell goes, he's got to get right in, in Harrison's face. 
apply pressure constantly. Keep his head moving, keep his chin tucked down, and try not to get hit you know, with the big punches that, uh, that, that Jim talks about. There's no doubt that Harrison punches harder and more solidly. And if he leaves his chin in the right place, he might get caught with those square punches. And believe me, don't doubt that Harrison hits with tremendous power. So he's got to stay on him, keep his head moving, and weather the early storm and try and dominate the fight. If you were looking for a scare at the weigh-in, I'm afraid you've tuned in for the wrong fight. Two of the most impeccable the professionals we've ever had in this country. McCulloch, long-time bantamweight, super bantamweight, <laughs> with nine stone to spare. <laughs> The suggestions were that Harrison maybe has found it harder and harder mm. struggling to get under the nine stone. We know they're a supremely professional outfit, Jim. They'll do it the right way, but how tough has it been for Harrison to make nine stone, in your opinion? Now, I think he's been doing that on a regular basis. He knows how to make the weight. Uh, some fighters uh, get fit for, for the first month or so and then start doing the weight. You do both things at the same time. You bring the weight down gradually and, and you become strong at the weight. And his dad, Peter Harrison, has told us, two pound a week, that's how we do it. That is the right way to do that. A former fighter himself, uh, Peter, he knows exactly how it should be done. He knows his son, obviously, better than anybody. He couldn't know his son any better. They always, they never leave anything to chance. That's what I admire about the whole setup, and he'll have done the weight properly. You know, when we, Jim, when we look through some of the highlights on the way through to the top with Harrison, I know he hasn't fought the Moraleses and Hameds, but haven't they managed his career step by step to perfection? Yes, I, th I think they've fought several people at the perfect time, just people coming to the end of the career. I wonder if maybe they're thinking they're doing that again tonight. I wonder if maybe they're thinking uh, Wayne's a little bit over the top. He hasn't boxed in proper world class for about three and a half years. So maybe they think they're catching him just at the right time. I hope, I'm sure they won't be so silly as that, because this is going to be a real tough fight for Scott tonight. Do you think he's got the patience and adaptability if McCulloch proves a man who needs something slightly different? Can Harrison deliver that? Maybe one of his weaknesses, he, he doesn't come out, he doesn't surprise you, he does pretty much the same things all the way through. The big problem, this, this fellow is so experienced. I mean, the reason he's so relaxed, look at some of the people he shared the ring with. He, he is quite at home, he is perfectly relaxed, and his experience, Harris must not have allowed uh, to, to, to bring his experience to bear. The one stat that worries anybody who supports McCulloch Barry is the age. Mm -hmm. Now, well, how, age is, how, how worried all, would you be about Well, that? it's all relative. It's all, if you're a bad liver, then age has a problem. And if you take a lot of punches, which he has done, there's no doubt about that, but he's got a sound chin, he has a shoulder. You can only talk about recent form, and his recent form has proved that he looks really sharp and fast and focused. He's always been focused and determined, but he's up against a tough young champion. And I think that experience has allowed him to be this relaxed, this close to the fight, and making uh, maybe Harrison a little bit nervous is only experience, and I think it's gonna be a great fight. I still think Harrison will be too strong for him. You know what makes it a great fight? So many professionals are interested in it. Spencer Oliver and Gary Jacobs at ringside now with Ed Robinson. Well, Gary, as a former fighter, tell us why you're so excited about this fight. Oh, this is one of those fights that you just don't want to miss. A proper trade fight, a guy that who's, a, who's made his mark and a guy who's uh, trying to make his mark and one that's trying to come back. A real proper trade fight, one just not to be missed. And it's one of those 50-50 ones, a, a fantastic fight. That's right, it seems, Spencer, that everyone's got an opinion about this fight. What's yours? It is a genuine 50-50 fight. I mean, I lean towards McCulloch. I know Harrison's the younger, the fresher. Harrison's very tight at a weight. And let's not forget, McCulloch has been mixing in this class for quite a while now. He boxed Morales, went 12 rounds with Morales, went 12 rounds with Hamid. So, you know, if these guys can't stop him, then I don't think Scott Harrison will. And the three and a half years where he hasn't been mixing in good at company, um, Wayne McCulloch, you know, he will be fresher for that because he's been in so many th difficult contests. So I'm just going to lean towards McCulloch. Well, Gary, I mean, how is Mac how is Harrison going to cope with McCulloch's work rate? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, Harrison's a, an all-aggressive all pressure fighter. He goes forward, and I will say one thing about Scott Harrison. There's nobody he wants to duck. He wants to fight the best. He's fought all the big names so far to get there. He's fighting McCulloch, and he wants to fight the, the ones after that. So he's not ducking anybody. He wants to be a true champion. He believes he wants to be the best, so he wants to fight the best. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Spencer. Now for three-weight world champion Johnny Tapia. Got a great roar here tonight. He's with Adam Smith. Yeah, it's fantastic to have one of the modern legends of the sport over here. So, who wins, Wayne McCulloch or Scott Harrison? It's, uh, it's a real nail-biter, isn't it, Johnny? It's going to be a beautiful fight. Both of them come to fight. Uh, I'm just happy to have my 10-year anniversary out here. It's a big blessing, and uh, for the fighters, may the best man win. Nobody get hurt. What do you think, McCulloch with the experience and the uh, frenetic work rate or Harrison's youth and, uh, and strength and size to come through? This will be my first time seeing Harrison, but, uh, you know, May McCulloch comes at you with no power. 
But I hear this other guy, he's real, Harrison, real motivated. He's got a lot to prove here in his hometown, and uh, I'm looking forward to see who's going to be the winner. I mean, nobody stopped Wayne McCulloch ever, so that'll be a surprise. I mean, it's probably going to be a distance fight, isn't it? It'll be a distance fight, but uh, see how much shape he comes. What if the trip due to him to come from Las Vegas all the way here, you know, change of altitude? He's originally from uh, Ireland, but let's see what happens. I'm Who are you rooting for? And do you want the winner? May the best man win. <laughs> we hear you may be fighting the winner. <laughs> I fight anybody. Everybody knows me already. I, I go against anybody. I'm back on my recovery and uh, one day at a time. And if God's willing, maybe they, somebody will give me another shot. Fantastic having you with us, Johnny. Enjoy the fight. And I thank you. He'd be welcome back anytime. Wouldn't he fill this arena? But they've done it without him tonight. Scotland's first ever World Featherweight champion defends tonight against one of the best ever produced in Ireland. All is set. Wonderful lineup of Premiership action for you. Sunday, our pay per view match Liverpool against Leeds. For further information on that one, Sky Digital viewers should tune to channel 433 and follow the instructions there. Cable customers, contact your local operator. And from 3 on Sunday afternoon on Sky Sports 1, live from Highbury, Arsenal against Everton. And that's followed at 6.15 by Scottish Cup football from the fifth round as Inverness meet Celtic. Here in Glasgow, the Brayhead Arena is split. Boxing fans across the country have been split. The arguments are about to be sorted out here between Scott Harrison and Wayne McCulloch. A tetchy build-up it has been, and perhaps not such a surprise to learn that there is now another debate going on backstage. Craig Slater will explain to us what's happening now. That's right, Paul. As you say, plenty of needle between the Foo Fighters and the build-up to this. And Frank Maloney, now controversy over the gloves. What's been happening? Well, yes, at the rules meeting, gloves are selected as normal, and each camp chooses them. Champion gets choice. We chose our gloves. We put our name across the top. For some unknown reason, the WBO or a board official gave them to Wayne McCulloch, who was gloved up and ready to go in the ring, and we were brought in um, the reserve set of gloves. So we just asked for our gloves back. So you don't think there's any sort of psychological warfare or anything like that going on behind the scenes here? Well, I think if it's um, a psychological warfare, it's better for us because if a fighter is already gloved up and ready to go in the ring and has to take his gloves off, it does affect him. Um, it's a ploy that you know, Americans use a lot, but it, this was a mistake by the Border Control. And just looking at Scott Harrison, he looks in pretty mean mood already. He's in a good shape, he's ready, and he's going to go out there and give the crowd what they'd like to see. Thanks very much, Frank. I'll give you a straight back. Left wing. Barry, who's won that little spat? Oh, we'll know in a short while. I mean, I don't think it really... Uh, to be honest, we talked a bit earlier... I talked a bit earlier about McCullough being, you know, very calm and relaxed. I don't think his experience will allow that not to have taken any effect on him. But I think it could be a superstition thing. Um, I mean, it may be a little sort of tactical ploy on Harrison's behalf, but a lot of fighters are very superstitious. If they pick a certain glove, if they wear certain socks, they want to have them on the right feet at the right time and the gloves on and so on. So I think that could be just as, as important. I, I think, Barry, he'll be more affected by that. I mean, yeah, Wayne McCulloch is an easygoing guy. Scott Harrison likes to be focused, likes to concentrate on the job, and I think if anyone's upset, I think it'll be Scott Harrison. Yeah. I think there's more pressure on Scott tonight than Wayne McCulloch. Wayne McCulloch, he's been through it all before. He's coming towards the end of his career. He's going to enjoy himself tonight. I think most of the pressure are already on Scott, and that might just upset him. Let's get a view from two more old stagers who've seen just about everything in boxing. Dave McCauley and the great Ken Buchanan. That's right, Dave. You're over here to support McCulloch. Can he do it? In my opinion, yes, because McCulloch thrives in these sort of, sort of situations. Like, Harrison's a good fighter, but he's never been in with anybody of the class that Wayne McCulloch's been in with. And McCulloch's a class fighter. He's been in with class fighters, and I would think he's, he, he's up this like, big style. And I would say tonight is his night, and he wants to do this because this is his last chance saloon. And tonight is a night, I think, he's going to go all the way. And it's going to be a real tough fight for whoever wins, but I just, I fancy McCulloch by a short head. I mean, Ken, it's unquestionably Harrison's toughest test yet. 
I would say so, yeah. But I mean, uh, I think um, Harrison will have too much for um, McCullough. Like, you know, I mean, that left job, um, um, Harrison says, a brilliant, like, you know, and we wouldn't be that bit shorter, like, you know. Plus, he's went from Bantam way up to a featherweight, like, you know, um, it's, it's going to be a very tough fight for uh, Wayne Bertrand. And he's the younger fighter, Harrison. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, but that doesn't mean I always say that they. Um, I mean, sometimes an old head's better than a, a young head, like you know. But um, my money would be on uh, Harrison, like you know, obviously. Not just because I'm Scottish, but I just feel myself. Um, it's just got that wee bit extra, and I think that they can do it, like you know. Dave, obviously McCullough's got the experience, and is he still at his peak? McCullough's got the experience. He trains very hard. He's got loads of experience, which which means a big look. When you're in a fight, I guess sometimes the pressure gets the fighters. That nobody understands what a fighter is going through. And they've never experienced this sort of uh, this sort of atmosphere before. It gets here, and you don't. Some of them don't know how to handle it properly. And I would, McCulloch thrives in this sort of stuff. And I would say tonight, as his night, uh, it'll be a hard fight, but McCulloch will come through. Thanks, guys. I don't believe a lot of you. Thanks to Ed Robinson. Barry, your final thoughts. We've waited so long. Absolutely, it's a superb fight. Very much looking forward to it. I stick to my guns. I think that Harrison please, will come please, through. Timing's everything in this game. I think this is his time. He desperately wants to prove himself. It won't be easy, but he'll win a fabulous fight on points. What about Dave McCauley's point that, you know, Wayne McCullough, with all the experience in even bigger crowds yeah. in, against even bigger names than Scott Harrison, with yeah. no disrespect to him, yeah, you know, he's been there before. Man. I don't think he's ever experienced an, a, a passionate uh, crowd like this before against against him, uh, and I think his experience will help him, but still, as I say, it's about time, and I think uh, Harrison will come through on a very tough decision, but he'll win. Jim, your final thoughts? McCullough has his most impressive coming forward. He really has to come forward to be effective. So the first plan, Scott Harrison, they must meet him head on and get him on his back foot. The sooner Scott Harrison can get this little fellow on his back foot, the job is almost half done. He can't match him for punch rate, but what he must do is tight defence and make his punches count. Use his physical strength and power to full advantage, get this fellow on his back foot as soon as he can. You make Scott Harrison the favourite here at home? Yep, I, I, I pick him to win in points. I don't expect him to stop the colour. My colours are so tough. He, Nobody's he's, done he, it. He's done the full distance with harder punches than Scott, provided he's as fresh as we expect him to be. I don't see it. And I actually, is there a, a, a two year break that at his stage in his career and the tough career he's had, that, that probably done him more good than harm. A two year break could be just exactly what Wayne McCullough needed. Fantastic noise in the arena here tonight. So, what's he got left? 32 years of age. Wayne McCullough, a man who's done nearly everything we're about to find out Jimmy Lennon Jr. Than ever, it would seem. 
He seemed so relaxed all week. I think he even went out shopping with his wife today. Well, that, that's the sort of character he is. Very, very easy going and relaxed. You know, he knows this is his business. He's done his work and he's ready now. Every boxing fan all over the world will respect what Wayne McCulloch has done. Can he complete a remarkable comeback here tonight? Thunderous reception for Scott Harrison. Scottish flags everywhere. The featherweight with a face like a well-kept grave. And he can arrive, I think, as a real star on both sides of the Atlantic if he beats McCulloch tonight. Well, I think he can. I think it's really is a defining fight in the career of Scott Harrison. He desperately needs to win this. Can't have a slip up. You know, but he's focused. They've done their work. So he's a very professional fighter, Scott Harrison, and he's making, you know, he's coming along so well. His career's been very good. What about the kerfuffle backstage with the gloves then? Memories there of how Hamid was kind of derailed a bit before the Marco Antonio Barrera fight in a row over the gloves. Well, it can, maybe somebody was trying to do something, get a, a last minute a uh, little way of trying to rile somebody. I don't think it really would have would have done that. They were making a, a point. They, would, you know, they wanted their gloves. It's become a bit of a needle match as well. And ever since it's been announced, fight fans everywhere have been salivating about the prospect of this one. Here's what the tape says. Harrison, seven years younger at 25. That could be significant. Is it too late now? for Wayne McCart. They're both the same height, the reach, nothing in it really. Three quarters of a pound heavier, Scott Harrison, the natural featherweight, a suspicion that McCulloch might really be a super bantamweight. If so, he might be in a bit of trouble here. McCulloch, much more experienced, it's something that's heavily in his favour, and he's got a higher knockout percentage, even though Harrison is really thought of here as the one with the power. Harrison the favourite at 7-4 to four on, McCulloch 5-4 to four against the draw, it might be that, 25-1. to A lot of money for Harrison in the last couple of days. Scotland for the featured bout of the evening and it's all brought to you courtesy of Frank Warren's Sports Network in association with Showtime and Sky Sports as sponsored by Red Square and Ladbrokes. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the WBO President Francisco Valcasso, the supervisors Charles Giles, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge is Bernard Connolly. Our physicians at ringside, Dr. Gordon Duff, Dr. Bernard Tanzi, Dr. Christopher Greenball, and Dr. Graham Stead. Our timekeepers at the bell tonight, we have Jim Russell and Eric Gilmore. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Alice, Texas, in the United States, Dr. Ruben Garcia. From Brussels, Belgium, Andre von Grutenbrühl, and from Leeds, England, we have Mickey Van. Our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout is from Wolverhampton, England, introducing John Poyle. Hi, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans, around the world from Glasgow, Scotland, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the ring, the corner, 
going to stay in the British Isles tonight. Has the fight come a little too late in Wayne McCulloch's distinguished career? Harrison in the black trunks. Dower, steely-eyed. Fascinating to see who gets driven back in the first couple of rounds. What do you think, Glenn? Well, what about this atmosphere, first of all? Unbelievable, really is, but such a, a good fight in prospect and it really is it's pretty important early on who gets control and Harrison's just getting his jab out pretty well at the beginning he does have a way of imposing his style on opponents Harrison and there's that jab again not able to really get in range yet and get those arms pumping like pistons in the way that he does McCulloch says that he's easily capable of a hundred punches around maybe more than that Quite prepared to walk through Harrison's punches to try to get into range. But I'm sure Harrison has put a few pounds on since that win, and he looks a lot bigger all of a sudden, doesn't he? Yes, the weigh-in was 24 hours ago, and to be honest with you, Harrison looked like it had been a real battle to get down to nine stone. He'd been training in three low layers of training kit in a Turkish bath of a gym. It's a hurtful-looking right hand from Harrison who's taken control in the first minute here well he started very well Harrison got the center of the ring using his jab to better effect and looks the stronger he's finding it hard to get in range Wayne McCulloch here in this Celtic collision to bring back memories of that battle between Jim Watt and Charlie Nash some 20 odd years ago good right hand again from Harrison McCulloch's always been very easy to hit he's fought with his face all the way through his career but somehow overcome that with his own volume and intensity of work well Harren, Harrison started very strongly looking very good confident getting his shots off so well 
and these are pretty telling punches he's throwing. Pollock looking a little bit stiff in this opening round. He's just looking like he's had a little bit taken out of him by the, the power of the punches from Harrison, I feel. Just hasn't been able to get off with the usual stream of punches in that opening round, McCullough. Very, very definitely, Harrison wins the first round. Kenny Kroon, the trainer from the gym in Las Vegas, where McCulloch did the bulk of his work, he said he did 150 rounds of sparring. He was in a bit of trouble in that opening round, really. Yeah, I think he was. He got caught with a few good solid shots, and I think he's taken by surprise by the accuracy of Harrison. You stand right in front of him, right? You drop in your hands and you're right in front of him. Harrison's jab was the dominant feature. Yeah, Harrison trying to get his shots off. Decent ones to the, the body, missing with a lot round the, the head. Not one of Harrison's better combinations. That was the left hook and the right hand. But worth remembering, Ring Magazine reckoned that Wayne McCulloch has the best chin in world boxing. Second round. The winner of this could well be fighting the near legendary now Johnny Tapia, and then later the world number one Marco Antonio Barrera, the great Mexican who beat Nassim Hamed. Well, it's certainly a fight that Harrison wants, and one thing you've got to respect about him, he wants the proper fights. You know, he didn't want anything easy, he wants to be the best. It's been like that all the way through his career, and he moves McCulloch again with that left hand. Just looking short of ideas early on, McCulloch. McCulloch, who said in the build-up for this, he was surprised that Harrison's camp had taken the fight. Thought they'd made a big mistake. It did look a high-risk strategy, but maybe a bit less so over the opening round and a half, but long way to go. Well, maybe that's a measure of the confidence that they have in Scott Harrison. And that confidence looks to be good confidence at this moment. Harrison, who predicts he'll be the first man to stop McCulloch, he thinks he'll do it in about eight or nine rounds. Nassim Hamid couldn't do it, Eric Morales couldn't do it, Daniel Zaragoza couldn't do it. They're the only men to have beaten McCulloch in his career, all on points. Kulik has to try and be a little more elusive. I know he does take shots, but can't really afford to take a volume of shots from someone like Harrison, who has a good work rate himself. Harrison looking big, strong, dominant. It would have been fascinating as he lands with another right hand to know what these two fighters have weighed on the night of the fight, a few minutes before they went into the ring. We were denied that information, unfortunately. Because it's worth remembering, McCulloch's never weighed more than nine stone one in his whole career, even for a non-title fight. He was 8-12 for a non-title fight last time. And here, in at the big league, in the nine stone division. Important, I think. Good body shot from McCulloch. Well, he talks of throwing 130, 140 punches, but at the moment, the jab of Harrison is not allowing him to get set, to get in range, to throw any of those punches. Well, I think it's nothing short of a nightmare start, this for McCulloch. Exactly, and he just can't get into it at the moment. Good boxing from Scott Harrison. Saw so Harrison early on. Mazda 2, zoom, zoom, zoom. a tough new super mini with nimble handling, zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, zoom, zoom, zoom. precise steering, zoom, zoom, zoom. and the feel and poise of a bigger car, all of which delivers endless fun. The new Mazda 2, breathe in, drive out.
Well, one of the big questions about Scott Harrison going into this fight was, is he as good as people say he is? Answers, well, at the moment he's looking as if he might be. Well, it's looking like he might be, and he may be somebody you know, who's going to be a big, big star. Certainly there's been a terrific start for Scott Harrison. They don't know him in America. Frankly, I don't think they know him south of the border at the moment. I think some of the uh, sports editors who've given this scant coverage in England really should uh, be here tonight to see just how big this fight is. Up here is an absolutely electric atmosphere around this fight, and there has been with acres of coverage in the Scottish papers about it all week. But Harrison, if he carries on like this, is going to arrive through sheer force of performance. But don't write off McCulloch yet. This is a man who's been around and fought his way through several escapades. Just can't get his punches off though tonight. Well, I think that's just down to the, the good boxing, the way he's controlling this fight, Scott Harrison. Or has Wayne gone back a bit? Well, maybe so, you, but at this moment, you can't take anything away from Harrison. He's doing everything and doing it right. That's better from McCulloch. Wade who felt that his extra speed and a few technical refinements might be the answer for him in this fight and his now so been around big fight atmospheres starting to get a bit closer McCulloch here that's maybe just starting to get his timing a bit better hasn't had a great deal of activity so maybe needs to get himself into the fight but Harrison picking his shots well Harrison goes for two big right hand and the second one landed with a bow then thumped into the body as well. They're going to make the body a specific target. They said they know about McCulloch's chin. So body punching might be an answer. That was a right hand with the inside of the glove from me by Harrison at slap. And that is exactly what John Coyle, the referee, says. Crowd didn't like it, but he was absolutely right. The experienced Wolverhampton official. Seeing very good accuracy from Harrison really has taken his shot so well wasting very little almost like a character from a spaghetti western isn't he those old Clint Eastwood films stone faced unsmiling the hard demeanor let's go with another right hand oh, McCulloch carries that left hand pretty low and he's paying the penalty for that another good left hand it's a good shot back from McCulloch lifted a bit by that, and then he lands with a left hand too. And then a body punch, better than McCulloch here, who gambles and tries to walk through Harrison's punches. Harrison, another big right hand. Now it's the fight we thought it would be in the third. Better from McCulloch, but not enough. But signs, maybe just signs of encouragement for McCulloch there. Well, a little bit, he just seemed to be warming to it a bit more in that round. He was prepared to stand with, with Harrison, and I think he got a little bit of success when he did that. Well, he had to do something, didn't he? He did have to do something. I still don't think he did enough in that round, but he certainly rallied, stood with Harrison, started to get some good punches off. A real exchange at the end of the round. Ferocious trading. Well, they're both prepared to stand and fight. We thought it would come to this. And you know, I think this is the stage of the fight where there's going to be some thrilling rounds. Here's the fourth round. The black trucks, remember, of the defending champion Scott Harrison. His first defense. He won the title in this arena in a superb performance against Julio Pablo Chacon. Of Argentina ripping the title away from him ahead early here against McCullough remember it's eight years since McCulloch won the world bantamweight title in Japan long time ago really hasn't fought at world level for three and a half years or so 
largely because of a medical suspension. Maybe that's part of it then, he's just having to crank himself up a bit to be fighting at this elite level again. Yes, I, I think that is it, you know, he's had to raise up, now he's starting to find a little bit of time in himself and get a, a few of his good shots off. Yeah, I think that combination registered on the face of Harris and the two punch combination. A little bit of head movement too from McCulloch as well, but there goes Harrison with that accuracy again. Oh, right hand and again the famed jaw of McCulloch, absolutely no impression. He is quite incredible, just look at Wayne McCulloch, Mr. Indestructibility. Well, he needs to keep those hands, but he can't allow someone like Harrison to, to get free shots off. Harrison's finding time and time again with the right hand. Yeah, but part of the psyche of Wayne McCullough, I think, going into this is to dispirit Harrison, that he's going to get to a point, Harrison, where he's hit him with every shot that he's got, and McCullough's still there throwing in front of him. Well, that, that's going to be the McCullough's time in the fight, you'd think, the later rounds. combination shots from Scott Harrison but McCulloch is getting into this now lovely left hook from the pocket rocket just starting to get a bit of rhythm McCulloch mixing it up a bit of movement and then standing trading with Harrison looked to shell of himself for two rounds McCulloch but this is more like it and the right hand's a cracker this yet this from Wayne McCulloch Early on, it was looking a bit of a formality for Harrison. The right eye is puffing up a bit of McCulloch. First signs of that. He's been working McCulloch at range, using the jab in and out. Bit of lateral movement from him now as well. He's loosened up, making it harder for Harrison to catch him cleanly. Best yet by McCulloch that one. Well, this is boiling up to be the thriller we all thought it would be. That was a terrific last round, and significantly, McCulloch started to find his rhythm. He was caught by a few, but he started to land with some regularity. Yes, he did. He started to get into range to get his jab working. I think that's a uh, key. For the first time in round four, McCulloch hit his target of 100 punches in the round. I gave him the round. I think you did too, didn't you, Glenn? Yes, I did. I thought he mixed it up quite well in that round, McCulloch. Harrison is the harder puncher. Not much doubt about that, I think, at this weight. His chins always look good too, Scott Harrison. Whether McCulloch can make any kind of dent on a big featherweight, open to question. Good body shot. He's switching the attack a little there, Harrison. Harrison, who grew up in the, as a boy, watching his dad spar with world lightweight champion and now Sky analyst Jim Watt, taking it all in. He had world flyweight champion Walter McGowan in the corner for one of his amateur fights. So there's some pedigree there. Decent body shot from McCulloch. Harrison looking for the, the straight punches back. The right hand for Harrison is the one that's worked the best so far. So definitely more movement now from McCulloch. Lateral movement, side to side. Just making it a little more difficult for Harrison to get set with those hurtful looking right hands. Making him miss a bit more. Yes, he needs to have a solid footwork when he throws his combinations. Now he's having to move about a little bit more. It's not as effective, Harrison. The body shot looked a good one, though. He dug his toes into the canvas for that one. Keep the punches up, says John Coyle, the referee. But this is a real clean fight, and he can almost let the two of them get on with it. Oh, there's the wonderful combination work that sometimes characterizes Harrison. 
We noticed it when he fought against Tracy Harry Patterson, the former world champion, in only his 12th fight at Madison Square Garden. Yes, he's, he's so polished in the way he puts his shots together. Whist, very little, Harrison. Again, lovely countering right. Showing his class, Harrison, there. Quality shots are coming from him, and particularly with the right hand. McCulloch has a habit of dropping his left glove. And he is beginning to swell up around the face. McCulloch, another right hand. Can't miss with him in this round. Harrison's got back on top again after that good round McCulloch had in the fourth. Yes, Harrison's lifted himself with some very good polished boxing. Harrison's round, back in control of it. Well, one hates to second guess judges, but I would Make sure he's one thing about him hasten to suggest that it's probably four rounds to one for Harrison this so far. Yes, that's exactly as I've got it. He's doing the better work, got himself back in control of this fight with that very good round, Scott Harrison. Here we go, round six. Again, that slippery patch we noticed earlier in the night in the center of the ring. Disconcerting McCulloch for a moment there. McCulloch, who grew up in the Shank Hill Road area of Belfast, but a lot of his friends ended up in some deep trouble. Boxing kept him away from all of that. Nice little right hand from McCulloch. Oh, cracking right hand from Harrison. How does he take them? How does he do it, Wayne McCulloch? We wondered how he did it against Morales. But can he keep taking them in? That's the, the question. He's older now. It is a question, but um, we've seen it so many times. We just couldn't believe it when he fought Eric Morales that he got through 12 rounds. But he did. They used to call Tony Zale the man of steel, is the modern day equivalent. I don't think Harrison's going to get dispirited by the fact that McCulloch isn't going dizzy with some of these punches. He's just going to keep on working, isn't he? He's, that's his attitude to it all. Yeah, that's the thing about both these fighters. They're both very good professionals. Very different in character, but good professionals. McCulloch is getting hurt by these oh, shots. Thumping right hand. Oh, and another one. He could go down for the first time in his career here. McCulloch really starting to unload. How many more of these can he take? Even Wayne McCulloch. Harrison here has him on a platter for a moment or two. Harrison's looking for the big shots. He's trying to load up. He knows he's hurt McCulloch. I wonder what they're watching Johnny Tapia is making of this. He's never seen Scott Harrison before. And like everyone else who's ever seen him, I would think he's pretty impressed. Yes, he couldn't help but being impressed by this sort of performance. Really is just surprised that McCulloch's there after taking such heavy shots in the beginning of this round, but still looking to fight back. Good body shot went a bit low. Bit of blood around, I think, somewhere. And the right eye swelling up of McCulloch. Not closed or anything like that yet. He's taken some thunderous shots in this round, McCulloch. Nearly every other fighter in the world would have been down, I think, from some of these. I think this has slowed McCulloch a little. But this man trains so assiduously. Like hit by the right eye of Harrison. That's what the uh, little bit of blood was. Nothing much. Pretty amazing stuff, we thought it would be. Yeah, well, everybody thought they'd have a fight like this, and it's turned out to be as good as we thought. Really is. McCulloch showed a great chin. We know he's got one, but he, he really needed one in that round. 
in disarray there at the shots going in from Harrison. The right hands worked so well all night. And it, it was that again that, that really rocked the chin of McCulloch. Harrison came out with a good comment, I thought, at the press conference. He was asked about McCulloch's greater experience. He said, well, in recent times, he's fought the best, but he hasn't beaten the best. There's Cheryl, wife and business manager of uh, Wayne McCulloch. They're inseparable, aren't they? Except when Wayne's in the ring. She can't help him in there. He's well capable of looking after himself. Seven. Yeah, I've got Harrison pulling ahead. Four points clear on my court. Has to be that way. I don't think it's been that hard to score. I'm sure the judges have got something very similar to what Glenn just showed you. How can McCulloch get back in this? There's no signs of that work rate we were talking about taking control of it for him, is there? There's not, and I think that's because of the, the, the solid punches, the accuracy, the good boxing of Scott Harrison. Whose own work rate isn't half bad, by the way, either. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and he's not giving McCulloch a chance to, to even take a break from these heavy shots. Just a, a constant succession of well-timed punches. Well, I think that was part of the strategy to negate McCulloch's work rate. All the time he's having to take them and he's on the end of shots. He can't really be throwing back. Harrison's very rarely had to take the backward step. He's been in centre ring most of the time. And yet again, his critics might note that he is imposing his will on the opponent. But I think the weight thing's a big factor in this fight. I think it is. You know, he, he's, he's a stronger man. That's very, very evident. But uh, you know, don't take away from the, the boxing skills of okay. Harrison. So short. I wasn't trying to, but... taken a lot, Wayne McCulloch here. How can he plot a course back into the contest? That's the problem for him. Because at the moment, Harrison's control looks like a stranglehold. He slipped there on the, the slippery canvas and wobbled by a big right hand. sucks it all up and he is beginning to slow worth remembering that he's pushing on towards his 33rd birthday now well tremendously well conditioned Wayne McCulloch but so then is Scott Harrison he's winning just about all the rounds and putting him in the bank Let's have a look what the computer is making of uh, things so far. Harrison has landed 205, McCulloch only 142. Better success rate than a punch economy by Scott Harrison. And I think Wayne McCulloch just tapped his glove at the end of that last round, almost as if to say, yeah, you're good. Well, you know, we're not good fighters, but I think he acknowledges that Harrison's good. Round eight. Might it even be that Scott Harrison emerges to be the leading featherweight in the world? Certainly, his camp wouldn't be shy of going in with Marco Antonio Barrera, who's regarded as the number one after his win over Eric Morales and Nassim Hamid. Although well, the fights Harrison wants, and you know, that's good to see. Great right hand again from him, sort of right cross. This is getting very hard, you sense, for McCulloch now. Well, it is, I think, you know, it, it, it's very hard to take the sort of punches that he's taking and, and keep fighting back and try and do work of your own. It was always a big ask to come back from the time of inactivity. 
probably at a weight that's ideally one weight up from what he's best at, Super Bantam, and take on a really hot emerging talent like Scott Harrison. That's the way it's proving so far, but I wonder whether McCulloch has got more rallies left in him. Oh, walked onto the right hand. Another cunning shot. How does he do it then? Oh, head rocked back, and I wonder whether John Coyle, the referee, might think about the stoppage. I think he looked concerned the way McCulloch's head was being rocked about then, and rightly so. He said he'd do it in eight or nine rounds, and I think John Coyle might step in unless McCulloch can come back with something here. Harrison is on the verge of a bit of history here, I think, maybe. Big shots, McCulloch has to start throwing back. Otherwise, this is going to be stopped. It's the eighth round. Harrison talked about doing it in the eighth or ninth as well. He very nearly has. I think McCulloch there, with his record of durability, got the benefit of some considerable doubt. But I, I, think, really John, do. I think John Coyle is ready to step in. Certainly a tremendous round from Harrison. Can't be much left in the tank of McCulloch. There comes a time when the referee has to save him from his own bravery. He's not going to quit, that's for certain. But I see no way back from McCulloch here now. Not on all boxing logic. Harrison has been so dominant. Superb, really. He really has. It's been a, a tremendous performance so far from Scott Harrison. Really has looked. You know, Top of the league in world class. Well, if you're in any doubt about the fact that Scott Harrison is a world class fighter, there can be no doubts anymore. Somehow McCulloch got through the round, he shook his head ruefully and goes back to the corner. I wonder, I just wonder whether Kenny Grimm, the trainer, might even think about saying enough's enough. What do you think, Glenn? Should they? Well, I think I think that'll be on his mind, but he's just have a basic listen. stuff, Parker, right in front of you. You ain't giving him nothing back. Watch your back there. Parker, Parker, watch him out. Parker, you're not giving him nothing back. No. You hear me? No. You ain't giving him nothing back. He's walking straight to you, doing everything he wants to do. Well, the point there is he can't do anything back. That's the problem. If anybody could, win McCulloch would, but he just can't. He's just dominant, Scott Harrison. Tonight, I think, he's shown everybody just how good he is. I, think I wonder what they're making of this in America, because America, they know Wayne McCulloch in America from his battles with Hamid, uh, with Eric Morales, with Zaragoza, uh, in his time as Bantamweight champion. He's doing it against the fighter they know and respect, and at the moment, he's just looked absolutely superb against him. Yep, the Americans can't fail to be impressed by this performance from Scott Harrison. There will be those who say this isn't the Wayne McCulloch of four or five years ago, and maybe there is some credence to that argument. That takes nothing away from what Harrison is doing in there. I think it's in the referee's mind to stop this if the, this round is anything like the last one. Well, he was twitching to do it last time. It just he starts throwing a couple of shots back McCulloch so I think it, it is definitely in his mind and he'll not let McCulloch take a great deal more. Just able to make no kind of dent at all in Harrison who has this grim, determined look about him. Throwback featherweight going about his work. Certainly Scotland's finest since the days of Jim Watt and Ken Buchanan. No mistake about that. Frank Maloney's had great tears, prayers for Harrison, and that the prayers has proven to be pretty worthy. Just a little slip there by McCulloch, who kind of rubbed his soles of his boots on the canvas as if to try and get some more purchase. 
Saracens kind of called off the assault a bit of this round. McCulloch trying to keep himself out of trouble. But this is now just a grim battle for survival as far as he's concerned. Can he get through to the final bell? He must look a long way, even from the ninth. Well, at this point, it, it is a long way when you're under pressure like the pressure that he's under from Harrison. Great right hand there from McCulloch. He found something. Marked up around the face. More laboured in his movements now, McCulloch. This must be hard watching for his wife, Cheryl. And now he's a baby daughter. She's not a baby now, Winona. He's uh, here tonight as well. Harrison's just given himself a little breather in this first round, in this round. Well, after the last round, I think he had to. Well, headshots landed. Scott Harrison, 250 of them. It's, uh, well, it's almost twice as many as McCulloch has managed. The fame of McCulloch work rate has just not been a factor. Well, it's just because he can't get the shots off because Harrison is so dominant and has controlled this fight so well. Well, there have been nine rounds. I've given eight of them to Harrison. I, I, exactly the same. Yeah. There's only one I've given McCulloch, and that was that the fourth. Other than that, everything has gone to Harrison. Really has been in control pretty much from the start. resigned to it now, doesn't he, Wayne McCulloch, there's a little shake of the head there. Well, he just can't fight his fight tonight, hasn't been allowed to. He can't fight his fight, he can't also put a dent in Harrison, he needs to get into the fight and he just doesn't have anything to do it with. Oh, there's a left hook got through there, McCulloch gets the gloves up to stop anything that might have been coming afterwards. Well, he's had a, a little bit of a rest in the last round, Harrison. Now, I think he'll stick, he'll pick it up and try and take it to McCulloch again. McCulloch gets the gloves up. It hasn't been fight of the year material simply because Scott Harrison's been too good to allow Wayne McCulloch to get very competitive. The right hand around the tempo shook him up a bit then, I think, Glenn. Yes, and it then did. again too. The fuddling effect. Well, Not John. much left, I don't think, Wayne McCulloch here. Another right hand. I think he's ready to go. And another right hand. And again, John Pearl takes a serious look at Wayne McCulloch. And again, I think he got the benefit of the doubt. But he's taking a, a hammering, to be he honest is, with he you. He is taking a hammering, you know, he is. He's been too great for his own good, really. If he did stop it sometime soon, it wouldn't be premature, John Coyle. Well, to be honest, I don't think it's a way back for McCulloch. So, you know, his health's always the, yeah. the prime matter. Actually, he's got the rest of his life to leave. Scottish fans are taunting the travelling Northern Ireland contingent with your not singing anymore. I think it's been a bit of disappointment for them. But what bravery by Wayne McCulloch again. What a gladiator he is. Well, you know, we would never doubt that and we never expect any less of the, the little man. He really is an, an incredible fighter, Wayne McCulloch. But I think Scott Harrison is proving tonight how good he really is. Yes, this is more one-sided than any of the other losses he's had against Zaragoza, Hamed, or Morales, isn't it? Much more. Yeah, it is later in his career, mind. That's right, but it's still, you know, it's the way he's going about his work that's that's impressive. Scott Harrison is hardly you're know, putting doing anything wrong. 
Harrison, the new featherweight star in Britain now that Nassim Hamed appears to have abdicated. Paul Harrison. What can they say now to Wayne McCulloch in there? Let's, uh, let's see each stop if we can. It's not a lot. Do you think they should pull him out? Well, you know, he's, a, he's a proud fighter. He'll not want to be pulled out. You know, I mean, but I think they've just got to be a little bit careful with McCulloch. He's taking some pretty heavy shots. I think one of those was to the ear, wasn't it? I one, think that's what, that's what disorientated it him. It was. One run around the side, around the side of the head, and that seemed to really just knock his balance out quite a bit. Eleventh right? round, at times this is getting a little painful to watch, Glenn. Yes, it is. You know, there, there doesn't seem any way for McCulloch to, to win now, just take a lot more than he's already took. Well, this is a man of immense pride, he won't want to be stopped. You'll want to keep that proud record. But my goodness me, it's been heavy weather for him. Too young, too strong, too talented. Harrison. Another right bounces off the jaw somehow of McCulloch. He seems to have the physique of a mountainside. some great nights up here in Scotland we've already had a couple with this fellow Scott Harrison another big right hand lands against the side of the head of McCulloch all watched by Frank Maloney Harrison's manager wearing a kilt tonight now we've seen it all Deserves to hear the final bell, Wayne McCulloch. He's just trying to keep himself out of trouble. Still enough in those legs. He's trying to dance as best he can to keep away from Harrison's punches. Buy himself a little time of respite. Raiding tactics now by McCulloch. Yes, I think you're on his mind now is getting through it. Maybe Harrison's got just a little more tired himself now as well. What do you think? Well, he's, he's had to throw an awful lot of punches. Concentration has been fantastic. That all takes a lot of energy. And, you know, he'll be starting to feel the pace as well, but he, he never shows much, does he, Harrison? And now the right hand. Here comes the next salvo of punches. Kulak still has enough in the legs to get himself away. But he is a country mile behind. Well, he makes it up looking for body shots, just taking his time a bit more now. Harrison looking to pick the, pick the shots. Yeah, he's slowed a little, just fighting in burst, but he knows that he has the points in his pocket. Okay. McCulloch's balance deserts him as he goes back to the corner, I think because of the grip on the soles of his boots. But he's got through 11 rounds of this. It does look like he might hear the final bow. I must admit, there have been a lot of moments over the last few rounds when I never thought he would. Well, that's exactly right. I didn't think he, he would either a few rounds ago, but... You know, he, he has so far. Well, they both completed 12 rounds. Well, between them on 10 occasions. McCulloch six times, Harrison four. Stamina, in other words, not a problem.
Try telling that to Wayne McCulloch now after everything he's been through for 11. The next three minutes might seem like 30. Yeah, I've got a 10 rounds to one. That's how dominant this has been a performance from Scott, Scott Harrison. You can but admire the courage and bravery of Wayne McCulloch, but you have to admire too the skills of a man who seems to be close to his prime, Scott Harrison. Well, he wants to finish it off in style. He wants to stop him. I think that's what the corner have said. Go on, you've got the fight won. Go out and make history, be the first man to stop McCulloch. If he was hoping for a quiet ride for the last three minutes, he's got another thing coming. Now, that's just a loss of balance by Harrison. Wayne's world has been shattered here. No way back to the top level tonight. And this is an aging fight for him, isn't it, again? A very aging fight. He's took an awful lot. I mean, only his fantastic chin and courage has kept him in this fight. Ring Magazine had it right. It is the best chin in world boxing, isn't it? Well, he's needed that chin because Scott Harrison's been in great form. Utterly dominant performance, this, from the very, very impressive Scott Harrison of Canvas Lang. Well, the Scottish fans in full voice. As well they might be. Been quite a week, hasn't it, one way and another for Scottish sport. And the Scott Harrison gym isn't very far from... Celtic's ground, still celebrating that win over Liverpool. Well, into the, the last minute of this one. It's been a very good fight. It always Harrison has been dominant, Ian. Got him with the left hand, then back comes Harrison with the right, just to remind him of who's the governor. McCulloch has probably only won one round of four. He looked like he was beginning to just get into it at that point. Another crunching right goes in from the defending WBO champion. Just as when Jim Watt fought Charlie Nash. Scotland are going to be the winners here over Northern Ireland. 6,000 fans singing their hearts out for Scott Harrison now. There's the final bow, and surely that has gone to Scott Harrison, the potentially great Scott. No doubts about it, Glenn. No, no doubts whatsoever. It's been a big, big landslide win for Scott Harrison. He really did box well, and I think you know, this was a landmark fight for him. He come through a flying colours, and I, you know, I really think there's there's so much out there for Scott Harrison. I think he can fight anybody, can't he? Most it's definitely. I think he can, he can he can beat anybody as well. I mean, he was so good. Look at this scene. Cheryl manages a smile through it all. Wayne took so much, but to be honest with you, he was hardly ever in it. That's how good Scott Harrison was.